Okay, so the next and last exercise of chapter one is about roots of cubic and quartic equations. So what we just said about the roots coming in complex conjugate pairs, this is still going to apply to polynomials of a higher degree. So in other words, cubics and quartics are what we're going to be looking at. In other words, all complex roots come in complex conjugate pairs. So I've got three examples of some different cubics that we've got here. And so because a cubic equation always has three roots, we can have different setups. And I've said that these roots may be repeated or they may not all be real roots that we've got here. So the way that the graph looks will tell us about some of the setups that we've got here. So this is crossing the axis in three distinct places. This one means that it has got three real roots. This one is only crossing it in one place that we've got here. So this means that it has got one real root. And then what must the two other roots be that are not appearing there? Well, they must be two complex roots. And to be even more specific, they are a conjugate pair. And then our last one, which is a little bit different, this is one root. And then this one that we've actually got here is what we call a repeated root. So this one has got three real roots. Whoops. And we're going to say two are repeated roots. I'll quickly just tell you what I mean by that. If you haven't done, uh, I think it's chapter four in Pure Year One when we talk about repeated roots, and um, that's from normal maths. This might be a cubic that has an equation, I don't know, something like x minus a squared and then x minus b equals zero. The root that we have from this one, which is a, corresponds to a repeated root. So a repeated root of a. This is a here and this is b. So that's the setup that you can have for cubics. You always have to have, um, if it's just got one real root, you have to have two complex roots to go with it. So the same with quartics that we've got here. So let's see if we can identify what these might be. Well, I'm going to start with this one. We've got clearly we have got two real roots. That's one of the things. So we have two real roots here. Now that must mean that the two that are not crossing the axes are the two complex roots. And again, they must be a conjugate pair. Notice how we have four roots in total. This one from the graph, it looks like we've got two real roots here and a repeated root. So in total, we've got four real roots because it's a quartic, something to the power of four. These are z to the power of four type equations. And here it looks like our example has got two r repeated. And the ones that we're talking about are repeated are at this place. And then this type of quartic, it doesn't appear to be crossing the axis at all. So it's actually got four complex roots. And there are two conjugate pairs. I don't know, it could be something like, I don't uh, let's say it could be two plus and minus four i and three plus and minus a half i. They could be the complex roots where it's floating above the axis. Equally, it could be going below the axis. There's one other type that I haven't actually drawn on here, but it kind of makes sense. You could have a quartic that just looked like, whoops, like this, where it's got one, two, three, four real roots as well. Uh, but that's pretty obvious. OK, so we're going to try and use this in some context that we've got here. Um, so it says, given that minus one is a root of this cubic equation, find the value of k and the other two roots of the equation. So um, I have said in the notes here that the next three examples can all be done using chapter four techniques. I'm going to use the chapter one techniques, but um, I, I do think the chapter four techniques are superior. So you might like to try doing these questions again using those techniques. But I'm going to stick with the, the chapter one style just for now. So um, let's actually get started. If minus one is a root of this equation, it means when you substitute z equals minus one, it should be true. Equation will be true or correct. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do minus 1 cubed minus minus 1 squared plus 3 multiplied by minus 1 plus k, and that should be equal to 0. Now I can actually find out what k is here. So that's minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 plus k equals 0. Obviously, this is a positive, this is a negative, and this is minus 3 here. 
So we get minus 5 plus k equals 0. In other words, k equals 5. So that's the first part of the question done. Now we can do the next part of the question um, because we know if one of the things is a root, if we know that z at uh, the minus 1 is a root, we should therefore be able to say that z plus 1 is going to be one of the factors of this. And then the next bit is going to have to be a quadratic. Now I'm going to write above exactly what it is that I'm trying to compare. Remember k is 5. So clearly I'm going to have to have a z squared because that's the only place that I can get the z cube from. And at the end of this quadratic expression, if I want to have a plus 5, I have to have a plus 5 here because it's the only way that I can get a plus 5 from these constant terms that I've got. Now, the next best one to try and figure out is the z term, because the z term can only come from z multiplied by a constant. So let's try and figure out what this middle section is going to be. I've got z, and it's going to multiply by a constant. Sorry, z, and it's going to multiply by a constant here. So we've got 5z, but I don't want there to be 5z. I want there to be 3z. Well, here's the constant that is going to multiply by a z that is going to go change it from being a 5z to a 3z. Hopefully you can spot that is going to have to be a minus 2z. Because here I get the 5z, here I get minus 2z, and 5z minus 2z is 3z. Now this is like really easy algebraic division that you can just sort of do in your head. However, if you don't like doing this method, there are other things you could do. You could, um, you could use algebraic division, if you've learned that, whatever method you like. Or you could have said that this thing here, you could have called it like um, a, z. You could have expanded and then compared coefficients. But seeing as you're doing further maths, I think the best method is just to kind of figure out what it is that's gone on there by um, just trying to factorize it yourself without having to use any of these other techniques because they take a lot longer. So the last thing this question wants us to do is to find the other two roots of this equation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to solve z squared minus 2z plus 5 equals 0. Now I'm guessing this is going to be a complex one, seeing as this is in chapter 1, complex numbers. I'm going to use completing the square, one of my favourite methods for this. So it's going to be minus 1 plus 5 equals 0. So we get z minus 1 squared is equal to minus 4. So when I square root both sides, I get z minus 1 equals plus or minus 2i, and so z equals 1 plus or minus 2i. So the roots are minus 1, 1 plus 2i, and 1 minus 2i. And you could verify that by typing this into your equation solver, and you would come up with these three solutions you've got here. OK, so we're now going to try this quartic equation. And it says, given that 3 plus i is a root of this quartic equation, solve the equation completely. So first thing that I would say is, if 3 plus i is a root, then so is 3 minus i. And you get a mark just for doing that. Let's say you can't do any of the rest of the question. Just get yourself a free mark by writing down a root, which is a complex conjugate to the one that has been given. So like I said, you could do this in a chapter four style way, but I'm going to use the idea that when you do z minus a root, z minus another root, z minus another root, z minus another root equals zero, that, um, that's how you should be able to write it. So I am going to say that we know z minus three plus i z minus 3 minus i. And then there's going to be some other part that we've got here. There's then going to be z minus another root and z minus another root equals 0. And obviously, we're going to try and find out what are these alpha and beta here, because we've already got some of the roots. 
Now we're going to expand this bit. If you want, you could just do our previous technique, which was knowing that the sum of the roots is going to be the minus b coefficient and the product of the roots is the c coefficient. So I'm going to go in with that. I know that the sum of these roots is just going to be 6, so it's going to be a minus 6 z. And I know that the product of these roots, 3 plus i multiplied by 3 minus i, is going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10. So I've got this set up now, okay? This is what the beginning part is. This is z squared minus 6z plus 10. And I'm going to compare all of this to the original one, which is 2z to the power of 4 minus 3z cubed minus 39z squared plus 120z minus 50 equals 0. Now, if this thing here is a quadratic and this thing here is a quartic, I want you to think to yourself, what does this next bit need to be? Well, it needs to be a quadratic. And look, you can see it here. These two products are going to create a quadratic. So I'll do some nice big brackets. And I'm going to compare these two things together to see if I can figure out what the quadratic is going to be. The easiest ones are always going to be the first and last. So the only way to get this 2z to the power of 4 is by multiplying z squared by 2z squared. And the only way to get this minus 50 is by multiplying 10 by minus 5. So all I need to do now is to figure out what is this section going to be in the middle here. Now, it's much better to either find out about the z cubed or the 120z. It is not a good idea to try and find out this middle part because there's just a bit more ways of getting a z squared bit. I'm going to have a think about how I get this z. Now, z's come from multiplying a z part by a constant. So it looks like here the only way of getting the z is going to be between, why don't we do this in a colour here, is going to be multiplying this by this as well as multiplying this by this. This is the only way that you can get a z. So, so far, the minus 6z and the minus 5 is going to give us a 30z, but I want 120z. So that means I need an extra 90z. The way I'm going to get that 90z is going to be from multiplying 10 by some kind of z. And that some kind of z, I'm sure you can now tell, is going to be 9z. So there are obviously other ways you can do this. You could do algebraic division. I want you to practice with this method because I think this is the superior method that we've got here. So we're nearly there. We just now need to solve this part to solve the equation completely. So that's 2z squared plus 9z minus 5 equals 0. Now, obviously, you could put this on your calculator. If you put it in your calculator, it gives you a nice shortcut to doing an algebraic method. But I think we can factorise this. So it's going to be a 2z and a z. I think, let's see, that would give me a 10z and a minus z. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So it looks like this is going to give me a root of z equals a half. And this one is going to give me a root of z equals minus 5. So our roots are 3 plus i. 3 minus i, a half, and minus 5. Notice how we've got four roots, a complex conjugate pair. The other ones must be real. You can't have one complex one without its complex conjugate pair. OK, we're going to try one more here, and then you're going to have a go at doing an exam question style one. So it says, show that z squared plus 4 is a factor of this equation, and then hence solve the equation. So this has got that kind of algebraic trickery that we were just doing earlier. So I've got z to the power of 4, 2z cubed, plus, whoops, plus 21z squared, minus 8z, plus 68. And I think that if z squared plus 4 is a factor, then I should be able to write it in these brackets. Now, if this is a quadratic and this is a quartic, then this bit here should also be a quadratic. So let's see if we can um, factorise this without using any other of those methods. If you want to, though, if you want to use an algebraic division, you do whatever works best for you here. Now, the only way I can get this z to the power of 4 is if I have a z squared here. And the only way that I can get this 68 is if I do something with this 4 multiplied by something to get 68. So 68 divided by 4 is 17. So that must be a positive 17. Now, like I said before, it's not so good to try and concentrate on these bits. Um, actually, no, sorry, 
sometimes it's not good to concentrate on these bits. Um, but in this case, I think it, it could it could work out OK. Or maybe we could try the, the Z cubes and think, how am I going to get the Z cubes? So let's see if this works. I think the only way that I can get a Z cubed is by my Z part that I've got here. This is going to be something Z multiplied by Z squared. I can't see any other way of getting a Z cubed here. So because there's minus 2z cubed, this has got to be a minus 2z. We can check this to expand it and see if it works. I'm going to do that really quickly. I'm going to multiply everything in here by z squared, first of all. And then I'm going to multiply everything in there by 4. And let's just quickly see if that works. So you get z to the power of 4 minus 2z cubed plus 21z squared minus 8z plus 68. Great. So we did do it correct. All we need to do now is solve these equations. So we have z squared plus 4 equals 0, because it's now saying it's equal 0. So z squared is minus 4. And so z is plus and minus 2i. And then we've got z squared minus 2z plus 17 equals 0. Mm, I'm probably going to do completing the square here. So it's z minus 1 squared minus 1 plus 17 equals 0. So z minus 1 squared is minus 16. Square rooting both sides and you get your plus or minus 4i there. And so z is 1 plus or minus 4i. So our roots are 2i minus 2i, 1 plus 4i and 1 minus 4i. If you're not so keen on this technique that I've done here, you might want to have a look at some of the algebraic um, division techniques, which are in Pure Maths, Year 1, Chapter 7. Um, but if you're a further mathematician, I think you should push yourself to be able to do this in your head where possible. OK, so here is your question to have a go at. We've got a cubic here and then you're going to have a go at doing exercise 1F. And that's the end of Chapter 1. OK, so it says given that 2 and 5 plus 2i are roots of the equation, write down the other complex roots of the equation. So pretty easy for part A. If 5 plus 2i is, then 5 minus 2i is. Then I want you to find the value of C and the value of D. Well, I'm going to use this chapter 1 technique. So because I know that 2 is a root, it's going to be x minus 2. Because I know that 5 plus 2i is a root, then this is going to be one of the brackets. And because I know that 5 minus 2i is a root, then this is going to be one of the brackets. So I'm going to keep that minus 2 there that we've got, and then I'm going to expand this section here. I'm going to do that shortcut of knowing it's going to be minus these two bits added. So when you add these, you get 10. So it's going to be minus 10x. And when you multiply 5 plus 2i with 5 minus 2i, you get 25 plus 4 which is 29. Now I'm going to multiply everything in there by x. So that's x cubed minus 10x squared plus 29x. And now by minus 2. So it's minus 2x squared plus 20x and minus 58 equals 0. So just a little bit of tidying up. That's x cubed minus 12x squared plus 49x minus 58 equals 0. Good, good. That must mean that C is 49 and D is minus 58. Let's see if we got that right. Good. So C is 49 and D is minus 58. Like I said, come back to this chapter when you have finished chapter four and see that there are two ways that you could do these questions. Personally, I prefer the chapter four method, but I wanted you to be able to see how the textbook does it for chapter one. OK, good luck with your studies.